guys. What is that? Uh, what is that? Ah! But unfortunately, we're stuck. Where do we go from next? Okay, you ready for this? So for this story, I'm probably gonna have to go back to the very, very beginning of when this all started and when we were even thinking of the idea or when the doctor suggested that my grandpa should have a new replacement. So my grandpa's knees were getting pretty bad with his arthritis. He even said that there were days where he could barely walk or not even walk because that's how painful it was. So then the doctor suggested, why don't we do a knee replacement? So he said, all right, I'll do it. We all thought that it was a pretty good idea because this arthritis thing had actually started 20 years ago for my grandpa. And let me tell you, he's left it to the last moment, which he shouldn't have done. We're all saying like, he should have had it 20 years ago. And I totally agree because his knees have gotten to the point where he's literally hobbling around like and he can barely get up the stairs. It would take him like two minutes to get up the stairs. That's how bad it was. So we booked him in, right? And he got put on the waiting list. So after my grandpa got put on the waiting list, he saw the doctor that was going to do his surgery. And I think around then, the doctor actually gave my grandpa, surprise, surprise, a walking stick. Now that I actually think of it, I think it was actually late November, early December that he saw the doctor. And then I said to him on a call, because he called me later that evening via my phone, and he said, I said to him, can you send me a photo of the walking stick? He said, sure, sure, I'll do it for you. So he sent me the photo, right? And what he sent me was nothing that I thought I was going to get. So, I got this photo of my grandpa with the walking stick looking like a gangster. <laughs> I don't know why he thought of it. I think he was just thinking of being silly. But I don't think he realised that he looks like a freaking gangster dude. Okay, so fast forward a year later, right? And the doctors had messaged my mum to tell my grandpa that his surgery was in October the Hooray, hooray! I have no idea where that came from. Though. Hooray, hooray! I don't know where that came from. So, as I was saying, he had been booked in for the 6th of October, right? So, they also scheduled him in for a pre-admission appointment, which is where they give you all the information about the surgery and what is going to happen in recovery. And you can also ask questions about, like, All that crazy stuff. There's a bit of a crazy story behind what happened at the place. Okay, I'll give you a bit of a clue. There was something to do with the wheelchair. You almost had a wheelchair accident. That's all I'm gonna give you. Okay, now, fast forward to the few days before the surgery. So, two days before the surgery, it was on a Tuesday that he had to have a blood test because he was having his surgery. So they gave him the option of either the Tuesday or the Wednesday that he can go to the hospital and have a blood test. I recommended the Tuesday and he thought it was a good idea. So he went to do the blood test on the Tuesday, right? And then, so now we just had to wait one more day. Wednesday, we packed our bags to go live with my grandma because she didn't want to be alone and we thought we'll stay with her so then she's not alone because she's either been with her dad, my grandpa, her son, which is my uncle. So she's never really been alone before in the, during the night. So we decided to stay with her for a few days whilst grandpa was at the hospital. 
So my grandpa had to be at the hospital by 7 a.m. So we made the plan of him waking up at 5.30, which he did. So we set an alarm for him at 5.30 and he woke up. Then he had like an hour and a half to shower and get ready. And then around 7 a.m. we watched my mum and my grandpa drive off into the sunset. So the day before the operation, I actually called my mum to keep sending me messages that day and photos just to keep me up there so we know how it was going. So she did exactly that. Around 7.30 or Around quarter past eight, mum sent me another message with another photo, here's the photo, saying that grandpa is getting ready and that he will be going in in about an hour or maybe. Then around 9am, my grandpa went in for the surgery and mum saw my grandpa waving, so she decided to wave back at him because she saw him waving. And this nurse in front of my grandpa thought my mum was actually waving at him. Awkward! So the doctor said to my mum to call around 12 because he was going to be moved to a different ward. So the doctor said to my mum to call the ward at 12 to see how he's going and stuff. So my mum called at 12pm like they said. She asked, my dad went in at 9am for knee replacement surgery. Is he out of surgery into the ward? And the doctor said, that he is not on our list, so he might not be out of surgery. So they told my mum to call back at 1. So my mum called at 1 p.m. And guess what they said? He's still not on our list, he's still in surgery. And again, they said, call back in another hour. So what did my mum do? She decided to wait two hours instead and call back at 3 p.m. So she called at 3 p.m. And guess what they said? Surgery! <laughs> so my mum asked, Huh, why would my dad be out of surgery? And the nurse said, He'd probably be in recovery because all our beds in the ward are free. <laughs> and of course they said, Hold up here another hour, will ya? So at 4 p.m. my mum called again and apparently at that point the wall was moving. So my auntie said, what is the number? I can try to call. Ward number? Okay, I will try to call now. So she called and guess what? They gave her the information! Like, why did you guys give it to her but not us? We were worried. We didn't even know what was going on. We were stressing out badly. So the doctor said to my auntie that my grandpa was doing well, but he had a very low blood pressure and they had done a few blood transfusions to try and stabilize the blood pressure. So we kept on calling the doctor to get some more information. At that point we were wondering, would they even call us if something was wrong? And we just started worrying pretty badly. So we kept calling to get some more information besides the low blood pressure. We kept on calling until like 8.30 p.m. And they finally put us on the phone with this nurse named Jara. That was not her real name. I'm not going to say it. But Jara said that he had been moved to ICU critical care because his blood pressure was low. But he was able to have something to eat and something to drink. And he was doing well, and that's all what that was wrong. He only had a low blood pressure. And I think I might end the video there because it's getting pretty long. So I might make a part two of this. See ya! You guys have wanted an update, haven't you? Well, here it is. Ready for the update? But before that, I shall reveal who this person is. It is. Drum roll, please. My grandpa. And before
before I start the update, I'm thinking of changing stuff up a bit on my channel. I'm still going to do the proper discourage and the proper breakdown animation, but I'm going to try and do some of my story time. You OGs might remember me doing these story time animations, don't you? And let me tell you, this operation process for my grandpa is literally stressful. It was very stressful, especially whilst he was in the hospital, because let me tell you, the receptionists in the ward that he was in weren't telling us anything. They were just like, oh, call back in an hour. Oh, we can't go get you through to this ward, or we can't do this for you. We can't do this for family members, or let me tell you, it was annoying. And now, when my grandpa is able to walk, he's using crutches, or as he would say, scratches. <laughs> it's the funny, jo iconic joke in the family now. I think it's quite funny. Hi guys, um, I know this is probably different from all my videos I've been doing recently, but I feel like I've decided to take some time off for YouTube for now because someone in our family, not me, is going to have an operation, a pretty big one, an elderly person in our family. They had very, they have very bad arthritis in their knees. Their operation is on the 6th of October, so they are going to have that done then. So I'm probably going to take like the whole of October off. And then I'll tell you in an update who that person was. And I might animate a bit of a story of what's been happening for his recovery. And I feel like I just need to take time off just to make sure he's okay because he's going to have trouble getting around to different places in the house. Probably gonna be living with my mom and him since my mom's gonna probably be living with him for a bit, so yeah. Thank you guys, bye. <laughs>
At least I'm far away from him. Oh, you think I couldn't get across that? Well, I have a long arm and long legs. Hence the name Daddy Mama. Uh-oh, he's getting on me. I think I've got her. You definitely me. Oh yes I do. Ready for the pain. This can't be good. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <sighs> Phew, I'm alive. Oh no. What's happened to me? I'm turning to a player. No. Um, who's that? Oh no, that can't be good. <laughs> Ready for a fun game of musical memory. Round five. Red, white, smirk, and well-being. I thought I was done there for a second. What the heck is wrong with you, Mummy Longlegs? Why? Why did you have to almost kill me? You've got only seconds left, so choose your last words wisely, Death Day Boy! <laughs> uh oh, I've gotta run! Where are you going, player? I thought we were having fun, but you decided to hide from me! You can't do that to my love. <laughs> oh no, she's coming for me. Run, run! I'm gonna hide above you, where she won't be able to find me. Looks like I'm gonna get run. See ya. Get back here right now. Uh, I'll get you next time.
have happened. Where do I even begin? You are perfect. Too perfect to lose. Going grave danger. Watching your every move. So you better be careful. Mommy doesn't like guests. A new playmate! Go. 
to subscribe to your channel. Should I like the video and comment on the video as well? How much money do you want to earn? Do you want to be a millionaire, trillionaire, billionaire? What do you want to be? Okay, sorry baby. lay down on and one sunbed that's like a chair and we have some swimming boards so then we have like my auntie is in the pool and she doesn't really know how to swim she's sitting on the chair with her board because she falls off if she wants to get up and my cousin was sitting on the, like, the lying down floaty and I was sitting in the pool net thing that I have which is like a little noodle with a net that you can sit in I'm sitting in the pool and then this is what I hear. My auntie's like, B, B. And then she starts waving the board around. And then she's like, and she's like, and she starts waving the board around. She starts waving the board around. Then I see the bee fly right above her and I see it fly right behind me. And my cousin's like, don't move. But the freaking bull noodle thing that I'm sitting on kept on moving me, so I kept on moving my hands to keep it still. And then I see the bee zigzagging right towards me. So I have no choice but to make a duck. So I make a dump for it and my mum is like my mum and grandma are like watching. And my mum has like more tea or something and she sprays it. Okay hi hi we can go next. So I was out at the shops walked into a store and it sold lots of pop figurines and stuff. Really? And there was this one guy in the corner looking at Pokemon cards. Was he? And keep in mind this guy's like 50. Oh He's god! staring at the Pokemon cards. Okay, and, and the guy that's at the shops walks up to him and goes, do you need any help? And he's like, no, I'm fine. Okay, and that's just like, creepy, okay. And yeah, And then I walk past him to have a look at some other stuff. And then he walks up to the guy and says, I need help. And he says, okay. And then I'm just looking, browsing through the stuff. <laughs> and I see the guy throw the Pokemon cards across the store. Just oh. straight out the door. Why? And then the guy started arguing with the guy that runs the cashier area dude, man. Um, okay, that's yeah, That makes sense. And then, yeah, he got kicked out. So, that's wild. Mm. Another story I want to mention is that, like, once I had my operation, I started having some nosebleeds. They were, it was like just like recovery nosebleeds, kind of, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> so, um, what I mean was, say well so as I was saying um I just had like a nose some nose leaves and it's like 
so it happened and I'm like, okay, this is the first time I've ever had a nosebleed. And I, before I've ever had a nosebleed, I'm always like, do nosebleeds hurt? I'd always ask it to other people, right, hi? You. So I'd be asking people, do nosebleeds hurt? Do you nosebleeds hurt? Have you ever had a nosebleed before? Have you ever had a nosebleed before? So yeah, I'd always ask them. And then this weird thing that would happen, like, I'd just be like, okay. surgery was they had to remove a sack with teeth which was probably about five or six teeth in that sack so they removed that and then after that they put in some of the bovine bone and but then they had to do some stuff with my nose because they found out apparently i don't have a septum so now apparently i can breathe through my nose listen So, my first operation was to close up a gap in my lip and skull. It was crazy. There wasn't really much of a um, recovery. I just had to be very careful. Now to surgery number three, which was my second surgery I had when I was a little baby, of course. So apparently the gap went further back than we thought. So that means it went literally to the back of my mouth on the roof of my mouth. So they stitched up the gap and my recovery was to not cry a lot because I am a cry baby. Wah. My final baby surgery was to have plates on the sides of my mouth, but I wouldn't really consider it as a surgery. And I had to have it instead of a dummy, so we'll just see past it. Now, unfortunately, because of my condition and my past surgeries, the doctors have planned this three-phase surgery thing. I've had surgery phase one done, which was the brain graft. Now I'm going to talk about phase two surgery and surgery phase three. So surgery phase two will be a distraction, which is known as a jaw distraction, which means they'll bring my top jaw forward because it's not aligned with um, my bottom jaw. So they're going to do it in a way where they're going to use screws to move it forward. So here's how it works. They're going to first separate the bone. Secondly, add these things called distractors. Then they're going to put some screws in. And then finally, they just have to turn it for like three months. So my surgeon, Dr. TK, don't question me, wants to get the surgery done around March 2022. But my orthodontist, Kai Tan, again, don't question me, wants to have expanders in in February 2022. So I have to have it in for at least six months prior to having the surgery which means it's probably gonna be moved and I wanted to get they wanted my mum and dad wanted to get it done before high school and oh gosh it's annoying. Okay, just to say things may actually change. So we still don't know like what is actually gonna happen with future surgeries and stuff. So expect this not to be like what actually will happen. I will update you when it gets closer to the next surgery. Okay, let's just get to the next surgery already. My final surgery is to do with my nose because I did say I had no septum, 
but I do have a septum. It's known as a deviated septum, which means it's like crooked. Here are the pictures. So this is what it shouldn't look like. They want to straighten that section of the nose up. And then, yeah, I can breathe through both nostrils because with the deviated septum, I can only breathe through one nostril, which is my left nostril. And it's annoying sometimes. <laughs> That's my right nostril. That's my left. So let me just clarify something. It's more likely to have a deviated septum in people than a cleft, because I think with a cleft, it's one in 800, and I'm one in 800 people to get the cleft and the deviated septum. Peace up, Peace A-Town. Up. Welcome back to Isaac Animations 2022. Get ready for some exciting story time telling animations. I hope you enjoy. Okay, bye.